Welcome to the Global Cooperation Breakout Session track. I'm pleased to introduce our first presentation. This is a fireside chat on quantum in the national interest. Moderating this panel is Paul Steimers. He is the founder and executive director of the Quantum Industry Coalition, a group of companies active in quantum computing, communications, cryptography, and sensing, committed to quantum leadership. He is a Washington, D.C. attorney and a member of Holland and Knight's Public Policy Regulation Group. Please let me introduce Paul Steimers, and he's going to introduce our distinguished panelists from NASA. Thank you very much. So, thank you all. Uh, for being here today, and Carl, thank you for the introduction. Connected DMV, thank you for putting together a tremendous Quantum World Congress. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to be involved. Uh, and it was a great speech uh, for those of you who were able to make it by Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy yesterday. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, great accomplishments in, in, the, in the building today and, and, and yesterday, but uh, I think her resume puts all of ours <laughs> to shame. As, uh, when when uh, when test pilot and and uh, uh, DARPA are are, are sublines on your resume, it's 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 pretty impressive. Um, but we're here with uh, with three other phenomenal uh, people from NASA today to expand on some of what NASA is doing, uh, and I'm delighted to introduce them. Uh, I, I'll I'll start with uh, Dr. Peter Brereton, who's uh, directly to my right. He's the lead for quantum sensing at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center and will direct the new Quantum Engineering and Sensing Technology, or QUEST, laboratory. At Goddard, his research and development focus has been cold atom sensors for uh, space remote sensing. Prior to NASA, Peter spent more than a decade working on applied quantum sensing research at the Navy Research Laboratory and on the physics faculty at the uh, U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis. Thank you for being here today, Peter. Sure. Uh, next is uh, an old friend of mine, NASA's chief technologist, A.C. Sharania, who serves as the principal advisor to NASA's administrator on technology and policy, pro policy and programs. Uh, A.C. leads technology innovation at the agency and aligns NASA's agency-wide technology investments with mission needs across its six mission directorates. He also oversees technology collaboration with other federal agencies and the private sector while coordinating with external stakeholders. He works within the uh, Office of Technology Policy and Strategy, and I've had the pleasure of working with him at various points throughout his illustrious career, including when he was at Virgin Galactic and at Blue Origin. Delighted to have you here today, AC. And finally, Dr. Nasser Bargadi. Uh, Dr. Bargadi joined NASA's Space Communications and Navigation uh, in 2019 as its chief scientist with the primary goal to build up SCAN's quantum communications and networking strategic capabilities. Before joining SCAN, he served as the technology lead uh, for the Astrophysics Division of the Science Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters. Dr. Bargatti joined NASA in 2024 uh, from academia to start a space radiation and shielding program at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, where he also served as the chief of the astrophysics branch from 2012 to 2017. Thank you for joining us today, NASA. So we're here to talk about quantum in the national interest. And to me, the national interest includes not just the economy and national security, but also things like exploration, R&D, education, environmental stewardship, international partnerships. And NASA has a tremendous role to play in all of this. As we heard yesterday, NASA has been involved in quantum R&D for a long time. We heard about the Pioneer spacecraft's quantum sensors, We've, uh, NASA's work on atomic clocks, the quantum AI lab, and the cold atom lab. And now we're among the first to learn about NASA's next steps in quantum. So AC, I'd love it if you could tell us more about uh, the potential that NASA sees in quantum technologies and how NASA plans to realize that potential. Yeah, uh, th thanks Paul, and thanks everyone, and thanks to the organizers of the Quantum World Congress. As I think about it from my perch at NASA headquarters, uh, you know, NASA is an, is an agency that deals with exploration, but also data. Uh, we generate, we use, we analyze a lot of data. In some sense, we're also a data agency in some sense um, for the benefit of humanity in terms of how we can leverage that data. And tools and techniques like quantum can help us 
understand the universe better, image exoplanets potentially, uh, understand more about climate, understand more about near-term uh, resources on the planet Earth, uh, and then help solve very challenging, complex problems that, that we as humans are facing, we as a nation are facing, and that are on the portfolio of NASA. Uh, so as our Deputy NASA Administrator yesterday talked about, there are applications for quantum sensing technologies to help in terms of understanding uh, uh, the uh, Earth better in terms of gravity mapping and leveraging uh, current uh, conventional sensor suites to the next generation of quantum sensing suites. Um, the other thing I'm excited about is the potential for quantum technologies to do one of the most important things I think NASA maybe can achieve in the century, which, which is to image an exoplanet. Uh, imaging an exoplanet, which I think will be a tremendous achievement for humans this century and, and, uh, uh, and is part of NASA's plan in terms of its overall strategy, will require a suite of sensors, a suite of capabilities, and some of the advanced technologies within the quantum space from clocks and other technologies will be key to achieving the, the, uh, if the capabilities we need for those kinds of grand challenges. Um, and I'm pretty excited as we in our, at NASA headquarters and the studies that, that Pam mentioned yesterday are moving out upon um, to talk with our NASA community, other government agency partners to see how we could bring uh, not only our NASA expertise together, but also um, kind of the best of the nation in terms of our capabilities with um, Space Force, NRO, our commercial entities, academia, the two, institute, the two uh, institutes we announced yesterday with NASA Goddard in terms of the Quest Lab, as well as the UT Austin Pathways Institute, I think are reflections of that if we wanna work with the community here and across the nation, and in some sense also internationally in certain, certain areas to, to kind of solve uh, advance these grand challenges that we've got on our plate as a civil space agency. So. Thank you, AC. Uh, Peter, I, I, first of all, congratulations on being named the, the director of this uh, of, the, of the Quest Lab. We'd love to hear more about uh, what it will be, what it will do. I also have to say congratulations to the entire Goddard team on the successful OSIRIS-REx <laughs> mission, uh, bringing asteroid material back from 500 million miles away for analysis uh, to a safe, soft landing on Sunday was fantastic, yep. uh, a real achievement. Um, but please tell us more about what you're going to be doing and, and, and what your team will be doing and, and how it advances NASA's mission. Sure, absolutely. Uh, you always get upstaged by, uh, by asteroids, uh, <laughs> but, um, which is in incredible. Um, I think from the sensing perspective, uh, if we kind of zoom out, uh, I think we've heard a lot about quantum in the national security space at this conference. And I think NASA sits in a unique um, slot within the government in that uh, national security is, is important within our portfolio, but also we are beholden to the public and beholden to, to the broader science community. Uh, and so you heard our science and exploration portfolio to, to a certain degree from the deputy administrator. And so that's really what drives our technology needs. Um, and you know, the, uh, for those of you who aren't aware of how those technology needs or those science needs get driven, there's the decadal survey process in which NASA and the National Academies of Science go through years long uh, processes to find where those uh, exquisite measurements are, what the huge challenges are over the next 10 years for the various science, space science and, and, and space technology communities, and we go after those. And so where quantum sensing fits there is these are huge challenges, both te technologically and uh, to the science that they'll, they'll enable. And so NASA has, has taken the perspective that we're looking for those quantum sensing modalities, and, and, and we'll hear more about you know, the communication and, and the computing moda modalities that can uh, achieve those exquisite sensitivities that, or, or, or have the swap capabilities or unlock science that no one else can get at. So you heard a bit yesterday in that the, the, the nearest term big technologies that we're going towards for space science are those with um, really the most unambiguous quantum advantage, if, if I can use that term, and that's 
in utilizing cold atoms for gravitational and inertial sensing and uh, going after optical clocks uh, for those unprecedented time uh, sensitivities. So at Goddard, um, we're going to focus with the Quest Lab on those two technologies, developing, um, really trying to marry the uh, atomic physics and the quantum technology industry and academia with, uh, with NASA Goddard and the NASA community's um, uh, deep capabilities in space technology. And, and those challenges are, are, are exquisite. We have, <laughs> in some sense, we're kind of in, a, in, in reverse. We have the systems engineers, we have the space technologists who can get us there. And we really need the quantum community, both in academia and industry, to interface with, uh, with, those, uh, with those engineers to get these sensors uh, in, in, in orbit. And so uh, it's not just at Goddard, you know, we have, uh, we have uh, quantum technologies, quantum sensing technologies are being developed at Glenn Research Center, uh, being developed, uh, you know, with partners at JPL as well. So, so we're really looking for that partnership and, and the Quest Lab is, is one way that we're, we're going to get at these specific technologies, um, you know, for these exquisite science goals. Well, thank you. And, and uh... I had wanted to ask, how can the people in the room help? And yeah. you're, you're, you're leading toward that question. Uh, and this is, this is for all three of you, really. What, what are the ways that, 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 whether it's engineers, whether it's the private sector, whether it's academia, whether it's our international partners, uh, how can they participate in NASA's, NASA's work? How can they engage? Uh, I mean, so from from uh, the, you know the Quest Lab perspective and the the, the broader kind of uh, um, cold atom technologies, we're really looking for uh, industry and academia and other government agencies. We're looking for uh, ways to get the Na broader NASA uh, science and engineering community quantum aware. And so we're looking for people you know willing to come work for us. You know, there's various vehicles, by, uh, uh, spaticals, IPAs. Uh, to work at NASA centers and bring that deep uh, knowledge of the physics and translate it to, uh, to achievable space technology, space qualifiable instruments. And from industry, uh, you know, we have you know, solicitations, we have vehicles by which we're looking for small business and the burgeoning quantum sensing industry to partner there to get us these ruggedized, miniaturized uh, components uh, that can get those quantum technologies into space when we need them. Thank you. I was going to say, tactically, I want to follow up what Peter mentioned. Uh, if you want to know, uh, before you have that conversation with NASA and, and Peter and, and Nasser, is look, read our decadal survey documents. Those are public documents we put out there uh, with the National Academies. And um, they mentioned the types of quantum sensitivity data that, or data that could be enabled by some of these quantum technologies. Um, I think that would be a helpful guidance, helpful pre-read as you engage with the NASA principal investigators. And the other thing I would just mention tactically once again is um, don't wait for a NASA solicitation. Um, don't wait for that. Uh, please talk to us. Uh, I wouldn't say bombard Peter and Nasser after, after this conversation, but we also have a mechanism called Space Act Agreements, uh, non-reimbursable and reimbursable, where uh, uh, entities, external entities can collaborate with NASA and those are mechanisms that each NASA center facilitates, can help expedite, and they can start the more detailed conversations of um, researchers from your organization working with NASA, um, kind of under an agreement kind of umbrella that then can get the technical kind of collaboration really flowing. So I think uh, tactically, read some of the decadal surveys, uh, uh, you know, and you can search for quantum, you know, and other, other uh, challenges. And then also uh, there are mechanisms there to immediately start working with each of these centers, um, Goddard, et cetera, all, all over the country. So. And, and if I can just add, add to that, absolutely. Uh, you know, the uh, biological and physical sciences decadal was just released two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. Uh, and, and this is in particular for those AMO uh, and quantum physicists in the room or in your companies, specifically really for the first time calls out those, those quantum uh, questions that can be uh, achieved uh, either on the ISS, like the cold atom lab, or on orbit. And so there are fundamental physics questions that we hope can be vehicles to get these next generation quantum sensors uh, into a ruggedized and space qualifiable format. 
Uh, you, I'd love it if you would like to add something along those lines. I'd also be delighted to hear more about, about the uh, computing and networking and communication side of, of what NASA is doing that you're uh, involved in, Dr. Bogani. Absolutely. To add to what Paul and Acey just said on uh, getting plugged in with what NASA is doing on the QIST community, both nationally and internationally. At NASA SCAN, stands for Space Communication and Navigation, our vision actually, that role is central in the following sense. We're all familiar with the NSF facilities, for example, in atomic, nuclear, and particle physics. We have designed our vision to include the community uh, by building a testbed, space-based quantum testbed, through which uh, technologists, uh, algorithm developers, uh, communication experts, both in the physics and the engineering side, and both on the um, uh, science side, you could actually do general relativity tests uh, from the system we have designed. So involvement uh, and participation and contribution to the community is absolutely essential through that testbed. So it will be a plug and play kind of uh, facility. Uh, a short uh, narrative where SCAN sits in this QIST uh, space. <clears throat> uh, SCAN, as you know, as you may know, excuse me, uh, is, is big on radio frequency communication and networking, and that's what, uh, everything in space, space to space, ground to space, Earth to Moon, Moon to Mars, and so on. But to actually go beyond that, Na SCAN has been invested heavily in technology demonstrations in optical laser-based communication, and quite successfully. We have a tremendous record on that. And that, to, to us, on the QIS community, both within and outside of NASA, means some kind of infrastructure is already in place. And we want to take full advantage of that using quantum channels instead of classical channels, the optical channels. So this is, this is one realization that we started looking at the potential quantum communication networking uh, for QIST community, NASA leading this, obviously, uh, by doing some studies and study and study. We have done something like 48 different studies over three and a half years to look at everything uh, from risk to opportunity, national security, and so on. Uh, some of this stuff is published online on our page, uh, SCAN page, and some are still not to be uh, released yet. We're working on it. But what, what, what we have realized, and I think that's not news to the QIS community, is that we can't do it alone. That's clear. Uh, the rewards are huge. Uh, the risks are probably equally huge, <laughs> especially when you include space in, in addition to quantum. Uh, as sexy as this may sound, the risks are really big. So we have to take very deliberate, small steps to reach where we want to go. And where we want to go in five, ten years, we have clear plans to get there as, uh, if, uh, to retire all these risks that we have identified carefully over the three years. And then hopefully go to a, a true quantum mission that will accomplish uh, connecting two uh, disjointed uh, local, let's say, quantum networks, uh, DC, Boston, London, New York, and so on, uh, depending on the, on the orbit, uh, at some point in the future. So that's where we're going there. Uh, we have been very careful in studying everything that's associated with that. We think it will advance both science and exploration. Uh, we think a leadership role for NASA is absolutely needed. Uh, all these are ingredients in, uh, in that vision. Uh, we're waiting on, we're not turned on yet, but we cannot wait to be turned on. <laughs> and to pl start playing. And I think it will be uh, a tremendous asset to the QIS community in the country and internationally. Over. Thank you, Nasser. Uh, so I, I would like to take a moment to, to talk about workforce development and education. Uh, that's something that, that my members have always been very, very, very focused on. Uh, I think there's, there's not a quantum company in the world that's not desperate to hire qualified people. And certainly, uh, uh, I, I, I cringed when you were talking about having NASA get, get those people because <laughs> my, 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 my companies need them. Um, but there's, there's no greater engine in the world, uh, it seems, than NASA for, for helping inspire kids to, to, to get into a STEM field and, and helping move uh, students through that, that very long process uh, to, to become people who can, who can be not just 
quantum participants, but quantum leaders. Love to hear what you're doing as an agency to, to help develop that and, and where you see the needs and, and, and where you can contribute. Yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely. You know, we have a, there's the national interest to, to, to kind of push people in, in, you know, inspire the next generation as, as uh, Deputy Administrator talks about the Artemis generation. Uh, you know, that's, that's really a critical role that, that NASA fits and a unique role. Um, you know, the, the internship programs at NASA uh, are, are just vast. And so, uh, you, you know, you, 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 your students, your men, mentors, uh, mentees, you know, send them toward, uh, you know, intern at NASA or intern.nasa.gov. Just Google it and, and it will, will get them to the internship opportunities uh, that are bound across all our, our major NASA centers. Um, the, the other side of the coin, too, and I think we've heard a bit about this in the DoD space, is you know getting the uh, the appropriate works, you know, technical workforce that exists to be quantum aware. Uh, you know, we can't all be AMO physicists. Uh, uh, that means nothing would ever fly in space. But we need to be able to get that technical workforce that we have, the world's best, you know, aeronautical space technologists and engineers aware of the unique challenges to uh, those quantum technologies, and they will then be able to feed back to the physics community and the industry those use cases that we may not even imagine right now. Uh, and that goes across you know, hardware, uh, space hardware, uh, to, to data. And, and you know, NASA has a unique role in a repository of huge amounts of data that are publicly available and must be publicly available, feeding into climate, um, you know, climate models, uh, astrophysics, uh, just across the spectrum, and and getting uh, you know getting those data sets uh, you know analyzed through. Uh, through either the quantum computing uh, resources that we have now and those that, that will, will appear in the next five years is, is critical. So, so that's where these you know, temporary sabbaticals or IPAs or internships uh, come to bear is you know, getting those uh, interjections, uh, focused interjections, uh, uh, insertions of, of that, that critical knowledge, I think will build the workforce without stressing you know, the... The, the small quantum workforce that, that, that we're ramping up across the nation. Yeah, uh, just add, adding two things. I think, uh, once again, tactically, we have, uh, as was announced yesterday, a new uh, Quantum Pathways Institute with UT Austin and a suite of universities. So I think those university partnerships that we have in all sorts of technical areas, we've, there has been a focus and, and recognition of the importance of quantum, thus the Pathways Institute. Uh, there's some great, uh, I visited, um, uh, NASA Goddard's lab where they have a bunch of students in one lab and it was awesome to see they actually have some of the graduate students teaching the undergrads that are coming in about uh, quantum technologies and they're, they're all, all going in the world. The other thing I think that lab is doing um, is also having a place for other government agency interns to come to NASA, which I thought was really cool as well. So we're open. If you're other government agencies, please, we have some great labs and Quest and other labs that are opening up. And then to SCAN's credit, SCAN, um, there's actually a uh, organization called the Space Generation Advisory Council, and they host an annual set of conferences to bring all the world's uh, smart people in space together every year. And SCAN is actually a big sponsor of that activity and um, actually helps not only sponsor students uh, and activities, but also helps educate those students. So I congratulate SCAN on some of that work as well. So, yeah. Just a footnote yeah. to both uh, uh, wonderful prefaces here. Uh, people in academia probably know that I, I have an education background and I was actually got into NASA through one of these inclusion programs. Mm. So I owe that program quite a bit. Uh, what people know in academia, there's something called space grant offices. Uh, to me, as somebody who's been on the other side, they were like little embassies for NASA mm. in all 50 states plus Puerto Rico. Mm. And typically there is a, a professor at some university uh, not necessarily a research-based uh, university uh, in that state, that actually uh, networks the talent in that state to NASA headquarters. And through that, we feel we're plugged in. We bring in talent uh, quite a bit, just like AC said, at, at all levels, K through 16 and beyond. 
Uh, we started a quantum fellowship two years ago within SCAN, and that's been very popular. Uh, but I really think the, the true uh, inclusiveness, uh, efficacy of these program is the fact that we are plugged in already through the Space Grant Office. Uh, and I'm very proud that I work for an agency that has this. And I think it's probably unique among all the government agencies as far as, the, as, yeah. far as I know. Maybe yes, you could. I don't know of any other agency that has this and effective. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, as we come to a, a, a close, I want to just mention a couple of quick things. Number one, uh, although NASA has been uh, involved in the National Quantum Initiative since its inception, uh, and, and I'm not going to ask anyone to comment on pending legislation, but it does look like the, the reauthorization of the National Quantum Initiative Act, which is currently uh, in process on the Hill, uh, will invite NASA to, to participate in, in an even greater role and a, a, a fairly substantial role, and I, for one, am excited about that potential opportunity. Um, AC, is there, is there anything in general you'd like to say as we, as we wrap up? Uh, quantum at NASA is, is sort of the intersection of the infinitesimal and the infinite. <laughs> it's a really interesting place to be, and, and we're just delighted to have all three of you here. Yeah, I think for us, and as I have come into the agency over the last nine months, there are several technology areas, technology volcanoes that are emerging, uh, that have emer that we've been working on. Quantum is one, AI is one, there'll be others, I'm sure, over the next few decades. Uh, but I really think there's a matching between the capability, what this technology from uh, sensing to computing, networking, and comms can enable, and our NASA strategic objectives both in the decadal surveys, our overall strategy as an agency, and there is a matching, because we're not going to get these incredible achievements without some of these technologies. Um, you know, so there is the uh, thing, uh, the questions quantum can answer that we haven't even asked, but there's a whole bunch of questions we're trying to answer currently uh, that quantum is gonna help us enable. And also in times of constrained budgets, um, the swap potential of these quantum technologies is also very, very interesting. Uh, I think there'll be more collaboration with other government agencies in the future. Um, and I think uh, we want to collaborate more with the tremendous investment out in industry and academia as well. So look from us. We're, we've been in quantum since Pioneer. Uh, we'll be in quantum for, the, for this century and look forward to working with all of you in this field. Well, AC, Peter, Nasser, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thank, thank you all for attending.